All right, I was discussing uh, the steps of uh, binary logistic regression. Uh, how can we analyze it? Uh, how can we do it? Uh, so as a next step, what I was going to create, I was going to create the exponent of negative z. So how can we create it? Uh, just you need to say, uh, here uh, you need to reset your variable and you need to put or uh, write the target variable which is exponent which is z with a hyphen in between exponent and negative z so go to the numeric expression just write txt and uh, start a bracket and you need to double click the negative z distribution this is basically you need to put in your uh, bracket so how can I do it again? You need to see exponent hyphen negative z. You go to numeric expression and you just need to write exp and start a bracket and just double click the negative z distribution and it will uh, appear in the bracket. You just close the bracket and click on OK button. When you click on the OK button, you, you can verify that your exponent of negative z has been created, and you can also verify it uh, from the data view. Right. So you can see that exponent of negative z has been created. So uh, as a step, we have done the third phase of the second uh, step. So what we need to do next, we need to add one in the exponent as a fourth uh, phase of our uh, uh, the second step so we need to add plus one in the exponent so how can we do it uh, we simply uh, we simply go we simply go here transform every time you need to create a variable you need to go uh, to the transform variable you need to reset it all right uh, I was letting you know uh, that you need to reset your variable as I have done it. So I just need one exponent, one hyphen exp. So in numeric expression, you just need to write one. You need to put plus sign and you need to double click exponent negative z. So this is how you can create the next step. You just need to click OK and you need to verify it yes this is one exponent uh, this is one exponent and it has been created here uh, you can also verify it from uh, here uh, how we have created so, so uh, next what we need to do we are going towards the final step of the second phase uh, you just need to create a reciprocal of your previous step it means that uh, you need to create one divided by exponent of negative z and it will be probability of heart disease. So you need to write this name. That is PHD, probability of uh, heart disease. So it, it, it will contain the reciprocal of our last step. So how, how can we do it? Uh, go to the transform, go to the compute variable, uh, just reset it and you need to put here the name PHD. That is probability of having a heart disease. And how can we create this PhD? Uh, as I have told you, that the name of the last step would be probability of heart disease. So I am writing here the uh, short form of this variable, probability of heart disease. So how can we create it? Just uh, divide the uh, just divide the one uh, with, uh, by exponent of negative three. So we can go there. We can go there. PhD is equal to one. For division, we need to use this slash sign and we need to double click one exponent. That is how we can create the probability of having a heart disease. This is the way you can create it. So just click OK and you have uh, done your second step. You can verify uh, the probability of having a heart disease has been created over here. You can also see uh, in the data bar. So this is uh, basically the probability of having a heart disease. 
if we see the values it is showing that uh, if a person is having uh, the age 20 uh, he might have 4% chance of having a heart disease if a person is 23 years old he might be having 6% uh, chances of, uh, of having heart disease if you see uh, much older people like if a person is 69 years old he might be having 91% chance of having heart disease. So uh, uh, this is basically the oral uh, uh, interpretation of our uh, uh, probability of having a heart disease. But what we need to do is as a final step. So when you have created your probability of having a heart disease using uh, second step, you need to go to the third step. You need to create a scatter plot of uh, probability of having a heart disease. So how can you do it? You just go to the graph, uh, you just go to the legacy dialog box, and you just need to select scatter plot because whenever you need to deal uh, with such like data that we have done it uh, uh, of uh, having an independent as a quantitative variable and, the, and uh, dependent as a uh, binary variable, uh, you need to use scatter plot. Uh, for plotting your probability of having something. So just click the scatter plot, uh, choose the simple scatter uh, and use the define button. And you need to put here uh, your uh, uh, independent variable. Your independent variable is basically the age. You need to put here, uh, just a minute, you need to verify is if I am not wrong. Uh, just a minute. Yes, we are doing right. We need to put the uh, age in y axis and we need to put PhD in x axis. Yes, we are right. So you need to put age in y axis and you need to put PhD, which we have uh, created uh, in our last step in x axis. And you just need to run it uh, by clicking OK button and uh, it will generate uh the scatter plot like this and you can see it, it is a monotonic uh it is showing a monotonic relationship and you can say there is a non-linear relationship between age and phd uh, because it is an indication of monotonic relationship so how can we interpret it if you can see it is showing a positive relationship it means whenever the age of the person is increasing the probability of having heart disease is also increasing but with different uh, rate of change so in case of monotonic relationship there is a difference of rate of change between independent and dependent variable so we can conclude here that with increasing the years in age the probability of having a heart disease also increases with difference in rate of change so this is how uh, you can understand uh, the whole procedure so i have also done it over here i i, I want to revise the whole procedure uh, as in the last part uh, i have done how you have completed the first step uh, how you have interpreted different values and uh, how you have created your predictive model uh, then after creating your predictive model on the basis of this predictive model you have uh, created your z distribution uh, like this i have uh, added the screenshot over here uh, then you verify that your z distribution has been created using your predictive model then you go to the next phase that is creation of negative z how you have created it uh, i have uh, demonstrated you just need to write the name in the target variable and then you need need to put a negative sign by double click the z distribution uh, in the numerical expression and then click ok you will find uh, the values of z distribution then you go to the third phase that is creation of exponent of negative z how you have created it uh, you need to write the name exponent z in the target variable you need to put uh, in the expression box exp then you need to start a bracket and then you need to click the negative z uh, double click uh, and then close the bracket and click ok and you will find 
the values of exponent z in your data view. Then uh, as a fourth phase, you need to create one plus exponent of negative z. How you will create it, you need to write uh, one uh, hyphen exponent as the name of the target variable. Then you need to place one plus uh, double click the exponent z then you need to click ok and you will see uh, that uh, values of one expression has been created in data view uh, so as a final step you need to create uh, the reciprocal of your previous the reciprocal of your previous step so how you can do it you just need to write the name uh, probability of having heart disease PHT is equal to numerical expression 1 divided by double clicking the 1 uh, exponent and you will find the values like this. So uh, as a final step, you need to create a scatter plot. Uh, so go to the graph legacy dialog box, then scatter dot. You need to select the uh, simple scatter and define the variable. You need to put your independent variable into y-axis and you need to put probability of having heart disease into x-axis. You need to click OK and you will find the result like this. And you can say uh, this is a monotonic relationship which is non-linear. In case of non-linear relationship, there is a difference of rate of change between dependent and independent variable. But it still indicates that with the increasing of age, the probability of having a heart disease also increases. So this is how uh, you can do uh, case number five. So I hope you have understand the case number five. If you are having any question, you can ask. Uh, otherwise, we can go for case number six. If you are having any question, you may write in the chat box or uh, you can also ask uh, by uh, your mic. You can also uh, ask it freely. Otherwise, we go for uh, uh, case number six because we are still are, uh, behind uh, case number six, case number seven, case number eight, case number nine, and case number ten. So we are still away five cases. Uh, so if you have any question, you may ask or you have any confusion regarding uh, the process of binary logistic regression uh, using case number five, you may ask. And if you have no any question, uh, please let me know in the chat box so that we can proceed further. There are basically seven participants and including me there are eight. So if you have no any question, you uh, can we proceed further? Please let me know. We cannot wait for the whole day. Please let me know uh, if we can proceed further. If you have any question, please ask. If you do not have any question, please let me know uh, so that we can proceed further. All right, Sadaf, uh, thank you. Uh, we can proceed uh, towards case number six. And uh, what is it? Uh, you need to understand the basic of uh, case number six first, and then you can understand the whole scenario and how it is different from uh, the previous case. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a difference of uh, the formation of independent variable. In the previous case, if you remember, uh, we got a quantitative variable in the case number five because our independent variable was quantitative. So uh, we uh, analyzed the whole procedure like this. But if your uh, independent variable changes, you need to uh, change the process slightly, not uh, completely, but slightly. Some of the things would change. And what are the things I will let you know? So in case number six, your independent variable is binary and your dependent variable is also binary. So you need to concentrate on your independent variable. Uh, our case is, is there any effect of smoking status of mother on the birth weight status of infant? So if uh, the pregnant woman are used to have smoking uh, habit, so 
how their smoking habit or smoke smoking status basically impact the weight of their new burning child so uh, here it uh, it is a binary variable because smoking status uh, if if the woman is not smoking or if she is smoking uh, basically this is the binary variable if, if we uh, open the relevant file from uh, case number 6 just a minute we will open case number 6 file all right we have uh, open case number 6 and uh, still you need to clear all these things first because they are already collected uh, and you need to find out Uh, some of the things like uh, you can see smoking status because in our case the smoking status is independent variable this 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 one this is basically the independent variable uh, to highlight it in this way smoking status is our independent variable while birth weight status of infant sperm that is our independent variable so how can we do it uh, you need to verify from your data set about these variables first you, you, you can see here you need to close your previous file yes so your smoking status is basically the binary variable you can see over here because this is our independent variable and it is already in binary shape and uh, you can also see the birth weight of the baby if uh, the birth weight is not low it is indicated by zero and if birth weight is low uh, it is indicated by one so it is also binary so independent variable is binary and dependent variable is binary when both variable are binary we are dealing with case number 6 so how can how can we analyze such data uh, in case 5 our independent variable was continuous we are discussing the previous case whereas in this case our independent variable is binary so first we will have to define our independent variable as a categorical variable in covariate section of the binary logistic regression so how can we do it uh, we just need to go to your step 1 what you need to do you need to go to the analyze go to your regression go to your binary logistic and what you need to do as your independent variable is also binary so what you need to do uh, your dependent variable is this and your uh, just a minute we need to see what is p w no Uh, we, we need to use ss and b w t lab basically these are the variables so go to the analyze regression binary logistic uh, you need to put your dependent variable which is uh, birth weight status and you need to put your independent variable in the covariate and what we need to do additionally uh, it is saying when your variable is binary then ever your categorical variable or your independent variable is binary so what we need to do we need to define our independent variable as a categorical variable in the covariate section all right we need to define it as a categorical so what we need to do we just need to go and here uh, there is a option of categorical we just need to click over here and you need to put your independent variable in the covariate so when we will do it when our independent variable is uh, binary but if your independent variable is uh, quantitative you don't need to do it but in our case our independent variable is uh, binary therefore we are doing this so you need to click continuous and then you need to click okay button and you will find the results like this so you need to ignore uh, the zero block you you don't need to see the zero block 
you just go to the block one and you need to interpret the values of uh, omnibus test you need to interpret the values of model summary you need to interpret the values of classification table you need to interpret the values of variable in equation so as a next step uh, you will apply uh, the same procedure that we have done uh, previously like uh, in our previous example what we have done we have run the binary logistic regression and we establish a predictive model then we calculate all these values and then we create the probability and then we uh, run the scatter plot of probability but in our case uh, in the case number six we don't need to run the scatter plot in fact we need to run a classification bar chart so in our case what we have done here uh, we need to go to the result again so how can we interpret it uh, you can see the omnibus test of model coefficient here the sig value is less than 0 0.05 so we can say that there is an impact of independent variable on dependent variable so what is our independent variable if we see the six case what is our independent variable this is basis so what is our independent variable our independent variable is smoking status and our dependent variable is birth weight status of infinite term so how what what we can conclude over here we can conclude that this smoking status has an impact on birth weight of infinite yes there is an impact because this value is less than 0 0.05 so we are rejecting the h naught and we conclude that there is an impact of uh, smoking status on the weight of the uh, newborn uh, babies so next is uh, cox and snell r square and you can see that it is a very low value of r square and it is indicating that the birth weight of infinite is explained about 2.5 percent by the smoking status because smoking status is is an independent variable so smoking status is basically explaining 2.5 percent of variance or variation in the dependent variable which is uh, basically the weight of a new birth child so uh, this is how you can interpret then you go to the classification table as i have told you previously that you need to interpret this value which is overall percentage if this value is greater than 50 percent it means your prediction is good so overall uh, the model is good predictive model um, uh, with the value of 68.8 percent so this value is greater than 50 percent so we can say that our predictive model is very good and this is correctly predicting uh, our study or our data uh, next is basically the variables in the equation here you can see the sig value of your independent variable it is uh, it is basically less than 0 0.05 so we can say that there is an impact of smoking status on uh, the uh, baby weight and what we can uh, say here, uh, whether it is increasing the baby weights or decreasing the baby weight, you can see uh, the sign of the beta. If the sign of the beta is negative, it means the smoking status basically decreases uh, the weights of the babies. Uh, and it also means if a person, uh, if, if, if a female having a smoking habit, if, if she smokes, uh, the resulting baby uh, will having a low weight so it will decrease the weight of uh, the new uh, burn child so you 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 can uh, you can conclude uh, here so uh, there is 49.5 percent chances that the new birth child having a low weight if the mother is having the smoking habit this is how we can interpret and using these two values uh, uh, minus 0.383 and minus 0.704 you can create your predictive model so how we have 
interpreted these results, uh, you can say here, uh, you can see here in a formal way. So what I have done so far, I have uh, gone to the analyze and uh, I have selected the regression, then binary logistic regression. Then I have put my dependent variable into the dependent list and my independent variable, which was also binary, that was smoking status. Uh, put it into the covariates and then I uh, click on the categorical button. And then you find that you need to put your uh, uh, smoking uh, status as a categorical covariate and then you need to click the continue button then you find these results as these values are less than 0 0.05 therefore h naught is rejected and what we conclude we conclude that smoking status have an impact on the birth weight status of the infant. Uh, and then we uh, have seen the value of uh, fox and snail arch care uh, what we have found here, uh, we found here, just a minute, we found here that the value of our dependent variable is basically 2.5% explained by our the cox and snail art scare indicates that variation in smoking status explained only 2.5% variance in the birth rate of internet. So this is how you can interpret the Cox and Snail R scale. Then uh, you have find out uh, the classification table. Uh, you just need to interpret this value, which is the overall percentage of correct prediction of the model is 68.8%. Then you need to interpret uh, the SIG value of your independent variable, which is also less than uh, 0 0.05. So we reject the H naught and we conclude there is a negative effect of smoking status because the beta was negative. So we can say there is a negative effect of smoking status on birth weight of newborn in Tenet. So if uh, the mother is uh, having smoking habits or his sm uh, her smoking status is on, uh, the, the newborn baby might have uh, the new burn baby might have uh, decreased uh, his or her weight. Uh, so with one unit increase in smoking, there is a 0 0.49 point, uh, 0 0.495 times chance of decreasing birth weight of infant. So this, this, this value indicates the chances of uh, decreasing your uh, birth weight if, if uh, mother is smoking. So then we need to create uh, our predictive model. So how can we create? We need to take the constant value from here, uh, that is minus, and we need to take the coefficient value of our independent variable, that is also minus. And then we multiply it with the smoking status, uh, and then we will create the predictive model. So we are going towards creating the probability of low birth weight. So how can we do it? We just go. Uh, with the same strategy, just a minute. We we'll go here and uh, we need to go to the transform compute variable. We need to create the z distribution. Uh, same, uh, basically, the same process we need to apply over here. Uh, so, how can we put it uh, our predictive model over here? So, I have told you, you just need to write your constant first that is minus. Uh, 0 0.383 minus 0 0.383. So you just need to put it over here minus uh, 3.3. That is the value we have seen over here. Minus 3, oh, sorry, minus 0 0.383. That was the value. 0 0.383. We need to put it over here. Minus point two three. This is the right value. And what we need to do uh, again? Again, the next value is also minus. So we need to put minus point seven zero four. Minus point seven zero four. Uh, then what we need to do next? 
uh, as per our uh, method, we need to put our independent variable with the multiplication uh, with the last digit. So our independent variable was smoking stick. So we need to uh, use steric sign for multiplication. And then we double click the smoking status, which is independent variable. We just double click over here, and this equation is complete. Our predictive model is complete. So you need to click OK button, and then you need to verify uh, your Z distribution has been created. After creating the Z distribution, you need to create, as a second step, you need to create uh, basically the negative Z, which, which you know the previous procedure that we have done uh, we have to create the negative z so we go here we go to transform we go to the compute we need to reset over here and we need to create hyphen z distribution so go to the numerical expression and uh, click on negative sign then double click on z distribution it will appear like this over here click OK button and uh, you can verify that your negative key has been created. Uh, as a third step, what we need to do, we need to create exponent of negative Z. So how can we create it? Go to the transform, go to the compute variable. We just need to reset it. Uh, we need to here to write exponent uh, and So we need to write here exp uh, start bracket double click negative c and bracket close and then click OK button and you will see that exponent of negative z has been created. You can verify your step. Uh, then second last step is one plus exponent of negative z. You, you just need to add uh, uh, one here. You need to go to the transform compute variable. You need to reset it. Uh, you need to write here one, one hyphen exponent. So you can write here one, and you need to add plus sign, and then you double click exponent v. You just need to click OK button and you can verify that your new uh, values have been created over here. You can also verify from here that new columns have been generated. So what you uh, do the next? Next is basically uh, the last step, which is the reciprocal of the previous one. And in this step, you can create the probability uh, of your dependent variable. So what was uh, the dependent variable? Uh, of our case, uh, our dependent variable is birth weight status of internet. So uh, we can create the probability whether the birth weight decreases or not. So as a final step, you go to probability of uh, birth weight loss because uh, we are expecting that uh, by using uh, the uh, smoking or having the smoking habit basically uh, decreases your uh, uh, weight. So we need to have a probability of birth weight loss. So how can we create a probability of having a birth weight loss? You go to the compute, go to the reset button and write here probability of birth weight loss. So you need to write in the short form probability of birth weight loss. And it is equal to the reciprocal of uh, one exponent. You need to write one, then you need to write uh, slash. Then you double click one exponent negative C, uh, just like this. You need to click OK button. And uh, you can see, uh, you can see over here that probability of uh, having uh, weight loss has been generated. So you can see here if uh, if uh, if a lady has no smoking habits, the probability of having a low uh, weight 
is 41%. But if you can see, there are different rates applied here. Uh, you can see over here, there are some ladies having the smoking habits like this. If, 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 a, if a lady is having a smoking habit, uh, the probability is 25% uh, of weight loss. And in the same way, you can see here. So uh, in this case, we need to create, when our independent variable is also binary, we need to create cluster bar charts. We don't need to create the scattered diagram. So first of all, I need to uh, explain all these steps from here as a review so that we can understand how we have analyzed uh, up to this stage. Uh, we have uh, interpreted all these tables and uh, how we have created all this stuff like the distribution, how can uh, we have put it over here uh, one by one, like negative Z, how, how we have created it, how exponent of negative Z has been created, how uh, one plus negative Z has been created, then as a last step, as a last phase, how we have created probability of birth weight loss. So as our independent variable is basically uh, the binary variable. So whenever your independent variable is binary, in case of binary logistic regression, you need to create the cluster bars. But if your independent variable is continuous, you need to create the scatter plot. So in our case, we need to create the uh, cluster bars. So how can we create? We go to the graph, we go to the bars, and then we uh, select the cluster bar chart. And after selecting, selecting it, we need to put the smoking status as a category axis and we need to put uh, probability of uh, weight loss as a defined cluster. And we will have uh, the bars like this. So uh, how can we do it uh, using this? You just need to go to the graph. You need to go to the legacy dialog box. You need to click on the bars. You need to select the cluster and define it, you need to put your independent variable that is smoking status in category axis and you need to put your probability of weight loss as a defined cluster bar. And then uh, what will you do next? You need to click OK button. And when you click the OK button, you will see the bars like this. So what you can conclude over here? Uh, the first bar is relevant to the non-smoker and the second bar is relevant to the smoker. So it means uh, 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 there are more people uh, with non-smokers and there are less people with smoking habits. So we can conclude over here that uh, uh, those having the smoking habits may have the low weight and those uh, who are non-smokers may have the higher weight uh, in case of their baby birth. So this is how you can deal with the case number six uh, and how it is interpreted. So if you are, if you have any confusion, you may ask uh, directly from me uh, or we can proceed towards case number seven. Please let me know if you have any confusion, uh, you can ask me or we may proceed towards case number seven. Please let me know in the chat box. And uh, there is less than one minute to complete this meeting. And if the meeting is over, you need to join again uh, from the same link. So meanwhile, if you have any question, uh, you may ask relevant to the case number six, or we may proceed further with case number seven.